Funky Friday animations? Yes, today we'll be going through the process of how Funky Friday creates their new animations throughout their new updates. We're going to be on call with Tambrush, the 3D modeling expert and also one of the animators from Funky Friday in order to learn more about the process so that way you guys know what's going on. So make sure you smack that like so more people know about the process. Don't forget to subscribe as well or else Huggy Wuggy is going to get you. And let's go see exactly how Funky Friday creates their animations. We are here on call with Tambrush. He is one of the animators and also the 3D modelers for Funky Friday. How are you how are you doing today, Tam? I'm, I'm doing very well. How about you? Not too bad, man. I'm just chilling, you know? So, what inspired you to get into animating and modeling? It started like a couple of years ago when I was just a little little guy just doing little things. To be, to be precise, I started using a software called Source Filmmaker, which is basically just a movie animation software to, to, to simplify it. For Steam, right? Yeah, first thing. Basically, how I got into modeling was just that I, one day I got tired of using other people's models. I want to make my own, so I, I looked into it, I got Blender. It was pure six months of learning the program before I finally got it down. Six months? Wow, that's a while. Yeah, that is a while, but it paid off. So, how long have you been doing animating for? If I'm calculating it right, I've been animating for at least two or three years, but I've stopped kind of like two years ago because I wanted to focus more on 3D modeling. However, I am slowly getting back into animation, which is a good thing. Do you enjoy modeling more than animating? Yes. Which one did you learn how to do first, animating or modeling? I've got to be honest, it was animating. Because as I said before, that movie software was heavily focused on animation, not modeling. So I actually did learn animation first. So when did you start working for Funky Friday? I think around March or April. Probably like a week after the, um, the new Tricky mod dropped. Like with, with uh, that added expurgation and such. And I was just playing it and I looked at the, the Demon Tricky they had and I, and I didn't really like it. So I really had a desire to get that replaced. How did I accomplish that? That's probably what you're wondering. It, it is actually pretty funny how I got into the Funky Friday contributor team. It's it's not how people really expect it to be. It's not like that they reached out to me and asked, hey, can you make this and this for us? It's actually the reverse, that I got in contact with a moderator on the Funky Friday Discord and they directed it to, I think, Lego. And then Lego messaged me and, I, and then we exchanged some details. And then I eventually got my new Demon Tricky into Funky Friday. So basically, I asked them if I can remake their Demon Tricky. Wow, hey, it worked out, right? It, it worked. So was that your first project, the Demon Tricky animation? In terms of Funky Friday, yes. Now going to the big meat of the question. How do you create animations and models for Funky Friday? Like, starting from the beginning from scratch, to the finished project. Everything starts with a reference or a base. Let's take Phase 5 Tricky for example. Phase 5 Tricky already has an existing concept. So you take that concept and you use it as a reference. The issue with Phase 5 Tricky is that it only had one reference. So I kind of had to improvise on certain features. You start off with a re relatively primitive form, which can either be a cube or a sphere. It then det depends on what your next workflow is. There, there's several types of workflow, I'm not going into that, that's a rabbit hole in itself. But what I do is just called sculpting, digital sculpting. What I do is just take a sphere, subdivide it a lot until I can easily play around with it and literally sculpt on it. Then I sculpt out the, the basic head mesh, the base mesh, or how, however you want to call it. And I do that until I have a somewhat acceptable silhouette. You do that with the whole body, and then you go slowly more to detail. So it goes from base mesh, to minor details, to major details. That is just a sculpt done, that is just maybe 10% of the entire workflow. What you do next is having to retopologize that asset, because that asset, or that sculpt, has millions of triangles, which a mobile phone is gonna crash from. So you have to compress them, yeah, so it's as many polygons. Exactly. So you re-topologize that, and then you go to UV unwrapping. The easiest way I can explain a UV unwrapping is take a doll, for example, or, t or your t-shirt, 
Your t-shirt has like seams on your shoulders and stuff, such. Basically your mesh has that as well and it unwraps on those seams. And what you get with is a UV map, which is then used to texture. Well damn, that's a long process though, I'm not gonna lie about that. So, what was the most stressful and complex project that you had to work for Funky Friday? If I'd had to think about it, it was probably the QT animation. QT animation, so the robotic one. Exactly. How come? So, the process with all other assets is pretty much the same, but with QT, because it's a robot and it's nothing organic, I kind of had to move things around a little. The main issue with the QD animation was that I had to figure out how to properly texture it. I tried unwrapping it, but it had it had unwrapping issues. Then I tried to just texture it with materials, which is another way to texture something. But if you want to make it as optimized as possible, you want to go with the texture. That, that also failed. So I had to go back with the texture map, and I spent a good two hours unwrapping the whole thing over and over until I got a good result. Wow, so it took you a couple of hours. Speaking about hours, which project took you the longest? Mm, I'd have to say Phase 5 tricky. How long did that take you? I think it was 12 hours non-stop. 12 hours is actually really quick. Wait, animating and modeling, or is it just modeling? It was just modeling. Oh, dang, that's still really fast for a model, though. I'm not gonna lie about that. Yeah, but you have to think about that. That was 12 hours of non-stop working. Nice. So, which project did you enjoy the most? The Demon Tricky remake, in fact. How come? You know the current Demon Tricky, it's, it's cool and all that, but I don't think that it holds up to my current standards, especially when Phase 5 comes in. You're gonna have this weird comparison that Phase 5 looks really good, but the, the current Demon Tricky does not look as good as Phase 5, so I wanted to remake it. I really, really wanted to remake it for a lot of time, but I never really had a reason to until now. Yeah, exactly, because you're learning more every day, like, every, you know, when, through experience and everything like that, so... I think there's a big difference between you a couple of months ago and now. A person is always learning and changing. So is there any tips that you'd like to share for those who are new to animating or modeling? One tip I can give to uh, fellow 3D artists is that if you just start it, start with something simple. No, no one forces you to model a whole Lamborghini in five hours. Start with something simple like, a, like an apple or a donut and then slowly build yourself up there. It's, it's gonna take some time, but you're, you're gonna get there. Exactly, you gotta take baby steps to reach your goals. So, I know that there's a lot of other contributors, a lot of other animators on the Funky Friday team. How do you correlate and work together? The whole contributor team is basically located in a single chat room where we can change out, like exchange pictures of stuff we're currently working on and all that. I don't know how other people do it, but if I wanna work with someone, I, do, I contact them directly because Especially in things like game development, good communication is a really important factor. I cannot stress this enough. I've noticed that you had a lot of great collaborations when it comes to animations in the game. So yeah, that's always good to be able to do communication like that. Awesome! Well, I definitely want to thank you for your time on the interview today, Tambrush. Thank you. Thank you for um, allowing me this, for giving me this chance.